Clearwater High School has done it again. The Tornado's presentation of Rogers and Hammerstein's classic, The Sound of Music, is now history. But the accolades continue to reverberate around the county following a three-night performance under the direction of Mick Sloan. I had big shoes to fill. Joy Roche worked here and taught theater for 23 years and built this program up and she left with a big high with Beauty and the Beast and I didn't want to uh, let the Clearwater community down or this school and so I wanted to keep that pace going. So that's why we started out with uh, Mary Poppins my first year, then Adam's Family last year and, and now The Sound of Music. My role in this show is the Captain Von Trapp and he is the father of the seven children and he is a naval captain. Um, now retired, and he, his wife has passed, and he's looking for a new wife, who happens to be the Baroness Elsa, and he is kind of having this internal conflict after his wife died that he is running his household like it's a ship and treating his children like they're soldiers and not as children. He's not being compassionate, he's very strict, and instead of calling them by their name, he calls them with a whistle. Yes, sir. The Sound of Music is a very traditional show. It was chosen um, due to the cast that we have this year, and it was also chosen to uh, also help out our instrumentation in the pit. We have a very large orchestra this year. We're very proud of over 20 students are involved. And uh, on stage, again, a very large cast, as well as behind the scenes people. Um, we really enjoy doing it. There are a couple of different challenges. We have the younger students that are ninth, 10th graders, and they're kind of new to this, so they're kind of green to this environment and how much rehearsal times involved and what they need to do backstage and, and uh, that kind of thing. But then with the older students, they start working jobs and so trying to get the schedule set up so we can get everybody together to work, that is a, is a challenge. Williams said he has taken part of his performance from what he has seen in the movie version of the play. I have from the movie actually, um, I've taken kind of his sternness and his playfulness um, with Maria and also kind of at the beginning talking down to her and then kind of seeing the transition and the oh well wait I'm falling in love with this woman kind of thing so it's kind of a contrast between he's an officer and he's trying to be regal and stern but at the same time he also needs to be charming. They inflect their own personality through it uh, that's that's the beauty of high school musicals is we don't want them to be a Julie Andrews and a Christopher Plummer. We want them to be their own people, and uh, it's worked very, very well. The beautiful voice of Olivia Quattrocchi in the role of Maria Rayner brought a Broadway-like feel to the show. Emery Wynn, a fourth grader, has a lengthy history in the theater, despite her age. Her experience is starting to pay off, fielding some better roles than in the past. I've almost never been a human role. Like, I'm always animals or plants. I'm Marta Von Trapp, who is the second youngest Von Trapp child, and I'm a seven-year-old. Well, in my line is, I'm going to be seven on Tuesday, so almost seven. <laughs> I've been doing musical theater for five years. I'm in another theater group, Bay Area Performing Arts and Casting, and um, they put something on Facebook that my mom found and told me about, and I thought, hey, why don't I audition? So I did, and yeah.
In December 2017, a large group of students from St. Petersburg High School, joined by a smaller number from Douglas L. Jamerson Elementary, descended upon the St. Petersburg waterfront to lend an artistic touch to the exterior of the History Museum. Rue Farias, the museum's executive director, explained how it all came to be. Well, a couple years ago, we actually had uh, Darryl, Derek Donnelly, one of the local mural artists, paint a mural on, our, on the side of our wall. Uh, of an iconic St. Petersburg postcard. And we had uh, some students from throughout Pinellas County do a little children's wall on our lower wall. So we decided we wanted to change it up a little bit. And uh, we talked about what kind of imagery we'd like. And we decided we wanted to tell a story of St. Pete through art. I was asked by Rui Farias, um, you know, what kind of mural could go on that space. And it's a long wall that kind of wraps around the back. And the first thing that popped into my mind was some sort of pictorial history of St. Petersburg using the architecture of St. Pete. We tried picking out most of the, the, the cool iconic buildings of the city, um, from the Snell Tower to Webb City to St. Pete High, the open air post office, some of the historic happenings like the first flight with the Benoit Craft and Tony Janus. Uh, so we tried picking out just the right photographs that would depict the city's history. We used old postcards uh, that the museum has the rights to and um, I, we blew them up. We had those as visual reference for the students to use while they were painting. We had so many images we wanted to choose from and you know, obviously they wouldn't all fit and we didn't want them, you know, we, we wanted them big enough. We didn't want them too small that you wouldn't be able to see them from across the street on Bayshore. So we wanted to make sure that the images were large on the wall. So that, actually that was the hardest process was editing and eliminating the images that we didn't use uh, on the wall. So maybe um, when the pier construction is finished, we'll continue this and wrap around the other side of the, of the building. You can kind of see here, I started sketching the idea in my classroom. I don't really sketch well, I like to paint more. So I have a better idea of what we're doing with, with paint. Um, so we practiced a little bit in the classroom, for sure. And then we um, proposed the idea to the Art Honor Society, the art club. I talked to all of my students about it. And the kids who wanted to be there showed up. The hardest part was to piece it together to make it flow like it was one elongated theme. And one way that we did that was to create the shoreline, because obviously all of these buildings are not beachfront, but we created that illusion. So it was kind of bringing in the, um, the beautiful beach that we have here in St. Petersburg, uh, the water aspect of it, but also including you know, the, the architectural history as well. I think that I underestimated the complexity of the buildings that we were painting because they need to be recognizable. You know, we did have the idea of having um, elementary come in and, and work too, and they did in the beginning, but to get all of those fine details of the architecture and the depth and everything involved um, probably took an older student that had been painting for a little while. I did come in several evenings before we started the mural to project the images and create a very simple line drawing just showing the, um, the skyline in particular and the stronger parts of the architecture, those stronger pieces that really needed to be there and in proportion so that they would be recognizable and so that when they did go and paint, they'd be able to see where it was supposed to go. Um, it was really more of a guideline, though. So we thought it would be, uh, we, as in all of us, thought it would be a quicker process, but when the kids started painting, we realized how much detail was in all the photographs. I never in a million years thought that they would be able to capture the exact detail of those postcards or those unbelievable images of the city's past, and they did. They did a great job with it. Here at St. Pete High, there is a Florida history class um, taught by Mr. Frias, who is also the director of the Museum of History. And I had an interest in that class for a while before when I shadowed, I had that and I really wanted to take it. And all the things that we learned there were extremely interesting and one thing that stuck out to me was Web City. So when I saw the reference photo for that one, I was said, I'll do that one. Because I knew a lot about it. It was interesting to paint because I knew the backstory. 
I painted Webb City, which was um, an old landmark of St. Petersburg. Very, very big. It's the world's most unusual drugstore. It had everything that you could need in it. Um, so that was quite a big piece in relation to some other ones. Um, and with that, the most difficult thing was keeping everything neat, especially like lettering and stuff, like big signs and stuff like that. Some of the things that were just so, such a great treat for painting this mural is that the location behind the museum, we had a lot of traffic going through there. A lot of people walking by, talking about it, asking about it. So many times, um, my students and I would play, you know, tour guide, we would give directions, and we interacted with a lot of very interesting people. And it was such a neat way to get to know the community and feel like we were a big part of it. It's been a parade of people back here looking at it. And uh, we, we've been sharing, you know, the, the story of the Sunshine City for 96 years here at the Museum of History. And uh, this has been a really cool way to share the story of our history. Um, I mean, we start with the, and they, the kids, you know, did this, and they came up with the arrival of the train, um, and from that point forward, went all the way down to the, you know, the, the new Sunshine Skyway, with each building, each scene, just depicting a different part of the city's amazing history. So they did, they did an unbelievable job telling our story. We're going to put a coating on it uh, to to try and protect it. Um, the pier approach is about to go under a major renovation as part of the St. Pete Pier project. So we've talked to the city because they're going to be putting a fence line around during the construction. So we talked to the city about coming up with some sort of way to cover it, whether with tarps. Um, and the fence line will go in front of it so that it makes sure that none of the construction debris or anything like that actually touches the wall. The Calix Schenecker Art Infinitum opened in late April at the St. Petersburg College Clearwater Campus Crossroads Gallery. Jonathan Barnes, Academic Chair for Clearwater Humanities, Fine Arts at the College, filled us in on the show which drew exhibits from 16 public and private high schools in Pinellas County. We've hosted a Pinellas County High School show for a number of years. Um, we've worked closely with uh, Sue Castleman um, who's helped coordinate that through with all the Pinellas County High School teachers. But um, about two years ago we were approached by um, Colonel Parker Schenecker who wanted to set up a foundation scholarship in addition to name the show um, in the honor of his daughter who passed away, who she was an artist. Um, so we worked with our foundation, uh, Francis New and uh, Sue Castleman from Pinellas County Schools and my dean, Dr. Jonathan Steele, to work together to set up this uh, scholarship opportunity for Pinellas County High School sh uh, students. This show is juried from um, all of the schools in Pinellas County, the high school teachers submit artwork. The work is first juried by um, a blind panel of high school uh, instructors, and then um, myself and another faculty member, uh, this past year it was Kim Kirchman, um, went and juried the work from what was already kind of narrowed down. From that group of work, we decided what was in the show, and we also um, decided what was gonna be the, what the awards would be, so first, second, third, and um, the three honorable mentions. The first, second, and third uh, award winners also receive a scholarship that's um, a very generous donation from uh, Colonel Parker Schenecker for those students to uh, attend St. Petersburg College. I think we begin with a little over 100 and we whittle it down to about 45 or 50. Um, our gallery space is a little bit unique. We have a lot of wall space, but um, we try to make sure that there's a mixture of two-dimensional and three-dimensional work and um, we try to mix it up between the various mediums, you know, photography, printmaking, drawing, sculpture, ceramics. Um, so we like to have a, a nice representation of all the different mediums. Um, and this year, as always, there's some really outstanding work. We'd like to showcase the different, different mediums that we have here at the college as well. So it helps the students to see, like, I, I took this printmaking class in high school and I, I did really well in it and that really is my passion and that's something that they could pursue at St. Petersburg College as well. We try to limit, limit to about 45, 50 pieces mainly because of wall space and floor space. It gives the students an opportunity to showcase their work. It helps to build a tie between St. Petersburg College and Pinellas County Schools. Um, we offer a really um, 
accessible education for a lot of students. So um, for uh, high school instructors who have students that are really outstanding but maybe don't have the financial means to go to uh, for your art college, um, this is a great place for them to start and then later transfer either to the state university system or to um, a private art college. It's been really, um, the response has been really good. Um, we have some pretty tight relationships with a lot of the high school instructors and um, we're working on some other opportunities for students. Um, so we definitely have a really good buy-in. We also get a good buy-in from Clearwater Arts Alliance, uh, which helps to provide some additional uh, funds and award awards for the students. Pinellas County does a great job with a number of other shows. Um, I know they do showcase some work at Dunedin Arts Center, the Morian Arts Center, the Dali. So there's a lot of exhibition opportunities for the students, which is really great. I mean, they should be celebrated for their accomplishments and hard work. Well. That's about it for now. We have some interesting shows lined up for you in the near future. We invite you to join us then for more Spectrum of the Arts. I'm Jonathan Ogle. See you next time.